Hey everybody, good evening. It's Thursday and I know it seems a little bit unusual uh, that we are live at seven o'clock, uh, but this is special edition of an Instagram live with Wurtzmans. I want to thank you all for joining us. Uh, for those of you that haven't tuned in before, my name is Jacqueline and I'm with Gortzman's Art Supplies here in Toronto. I'm so excited to be sharing this evening with you and I look forward to uh, showing you some unique product that we have and we do have a special guest uh, and I'm looking forward, forward to seeing him very shortly. I just wanted to tell you a bit about us. We've Our family has been in the art material industry for over 50 years here in Toronto. It's something that I've grown up with and it's always been very, very exciting for me to be able to connect with artists all over the world. We take uh, pride in being able to offer products that are not always available to a lot of artists here in Canada. It sometimes seems a little bit difficult to be able to get new product. And of course, we are always searching for those gems, those items that you won't find uh, anywhere else, especially here in Canada. So tonight we're going to be discussing a product that we are very excited to be showcasing for North America. And those are the Roman small watercolors. Uh, I did want to mention before our guest uh, joins us, and I do have it somewhere here. I'm just reaching behind me because I forgot to put it out. So we have decided that because of this, what we're doing this evening in launching the Roman Small to show you what it can do, we do have a contest that is on Instagram and Facebook and you can find out all the details. This is an exclusive set uh, that was created with Jane Blundell. If any of you are familiar with Jane, she is an amazing, amazing artist in Australia and um, we are very excited to be offering this gift. Uh, so if someone, when I open it up, you'll be able to see it. There are 24 colors in this amazing set. I'm just gonna open it up. You can take a look at comes in a metal tin and I'm going to just show you. So these watercolors are all handmade and uh, gives you all kinds of details and information about the set. You can t find all the information on our website, on Instagram, on Facebook. The contest will be up for a week. You do have to show us what you like to do with watercolors so that we can uh, be able to talk about all the different artists that are involved. So we will, if you wanna know more about it, you can check with us. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to our staff and they can certainly tell you a bit about it. I'm just waiting for uh, our guest again, and I'm gonna say hi to everybody before I'm not a, a true techie here, so if I don't acknowledge you right away, please uh, don't be offended. Um, I'm just gonna say hi to everybody, and thank you, thank you very much for uh, joining us this evening. Um, I'm going to see if uh, our guest has come up yet, and I don't see that uh, America's joined us. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about our guest for this evening. And uh, for and he's actually sent a request. So I'm going to put him on and then I'm going to tell you all the great things about him. And he should be popping up unless I did something wrong. Uh, there we go. Hey, Mary. Hi, Jackie. Hey, how are you? I'm fantastic. How are you? Good, good. I'm going to tell everybody all the wonderful things about you. Oh, that'll and, be a conversation. And then we can talk about the paint. Um, sure. I've had the pleasure of talking to Merrick numerous times, not only about all the great things he does on Instagram uh, and his lives, because I certainly have learned a lot from him, not only about the art that he does, but also about him personally and his extensive collection of art materials so i do have it written down and i do want to tell you all about it just in case you're joining Jackie. us for the first time and you Jackie. don't know yes sir you have, you have more more art materials than i do okay <laughs> just look it, that, behind. that's true that's true but my collection is different i'm immersed in it all the time you're 
actually using it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so for those of you that don't know, Merrick is an architect by day. And he's also a workshop instructor. I'm not sure if that's by day or by night or weekends and evenings. Uh, who loves sketching towns and cities around the world mostly using ink and watercolor and I can attest to that because I've seen all the beautiful drawings. He firmly believes on location sketching is key to artistic development and tries to draw and paint plein air as much as possible. His works can be found on Instagram and for those of you who want to check out his beautiful work his uh, handle is at MerrickBad64. He's also a member of Toronto's chapter of Urban Sketchers. And for those of you that have not checked it out yet, you should, especially with the weather getting better. And it is at USK Toronto. Uh, you can find those all on Instagram. And uh, they're a great group of people. I've met many of them uh, at different times. So everybody that's... Uh, as I say, just check out Merrick's work and please check out uh, Urban Sketchers Toronto. They do a lot of great stuff around the city and anybody who wants to try uh, plein air, and I'm sure Merrick can, can uh, mention it and tell you a bit about it. Uh, they work on great locations all over the city. And if I was sure. any better than drawing stick people, I'd probably join them. <laughs> Uh, and it's not only in Toronto, you know, because we have a group in Waterloo and we have a group in Ottawa, and in Montreal, in Canada, of course, there's, there's several other ones and, and plenty of groups in the US, United States and all around the world. Amazing. I think, I think it's over 200 chapters now or something. I'm not sure of the number. I'm, don't quote me on that. I'm, I'm, I'm sure I'm off, but it's a lot of people. <laughs> so tonight we're going to talk about uh, the Roman small paint. Uh, you and I have both met Roman in different capacities. Uh, I had the pleasure of meeting him at a trade show that we attend uh, before COVID. We've attended it every year, which is in Frankfurt, Germany, where we get to meet all the vendors from all over the world that showcase their, their products. And the first time that we met Merrick, he did not have a booth. He was uh, at the show and we had a really, my brother Neil uh, and I had a really great conversation with him. He showed us his color chart that he had been working on of his, uh, I think that's before he had the 180 colors. And then we had the pleasure of seeing him again the following year when he had a booth. There he is. Yeah, that's there him. There he is. Yeah. There he is. Raman, Raman himself at COVID times and these are his paints here at the bottom. And, that's uh, right. And he's just, uh, this actually is in his shop, in his workshop, where the paints are being prepared. And he works with his son, doesn't he? Yeah, it's a small family business, really. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a one man plus son and plus a couple of other helpers operation. Yeah. yeah. But it's uh, because of that, he says that he can maintain the quality to be pretty accurate all throughout because he was talking to me about the some of the pigments, especially the ones that are earth pigments. They, depending on which side of the mountain they come out, they are actually different. So sometimes, you know, the the, the same percentage of glycerin and honey and whatever else he uses doesn't work all the time because the material itself was different than the last shipment. So he adjusts it every single time to make sure that his paints are in this are in this sweet spot in between not being gooey but not being being too hard and that's one of the things that i like very much about his paints hmm. uh, i as i say we've uh, we've been playing with them here and um, i know we're going to be playing with some of them tonight um, the intensity of the color the color names which i think we'll talk about a little bit because you and i have discussed that uh, before <laughs> some of the unique names that he has for his paints now he does have 180 colors yeah, a uh, lot. That's right. <laughs> it's a lot of color. <laughs> it's a lot. It's it's way too many for me, really. But uh, you know, I enjoy this. Uh, and he's very particular and and peculiar. It's just it's just an interesting man because he when he talks about colors, you know, like he talks in terms. You can talk to him about colors in terms of n pigment numbers. You know, it's like talking to a. Uh, a stock trader or someone from uh, works in a bank. It's all 257 plus 533. They, together they make this wonderful mix. 
and uh, a lot of his colors are, sigma, are one sort of single pigment, as you know. Yes. Uh, but then he has some specialty colors that are mixed up already, pre-mixed two or even three or maybe even more, I don't know. Uh, and we'll talk about a couple of those as well, because one of them is my favorite by far. Yes. And I won't try to attempt the name because we've talked about that before. <laughs> so I'll let you do it. And I did pull one out because I know it was your favorite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, since we're talking about it, you know, uh, how about I switch my camera down to, to something here. A moment of uh, flipping and uh, it'll be, I'll be able to show you all here what we are talking about. So adjust the camera around and some light, and the, and the light goes the other way, that helps. And this is what we're talking about. These are Roman Schmal paints, and uh, hopefully this shows. And this is one of them here that I like very much. That is the number 401, which, right. is call, which is called Przybysz Gray. Now- yep. That's right. Yeah, so it's, uh, I don't know if I, sh I should spell it. I mean, I can spell it, but then nobody will be able to. It's, it's such a hard Polish name. Polish is yes. difficult to start with. And this particular one, this particular name, Przybysz, is definitely one of the hardest ones. But it's a last name of a painter who was putting this uh, particular concoction together because this particular paint here has three different pigments. It has uh, a green, it has a red and it has some ultramarine, if I remember correctly. Yes, it's a, a PB29 ultramarine, a cobalt green, and then something called red, which is anthraquinone. That's so right. So it, it's a mix of three different colors. And uh, they, when you paint with them, they separate and this split separate differently. So you might be able to see it, hopefully, on my screen that there is uh, definitely a green patch here there's a red patch here that comes from the, the, the red, but I'm not going to repeat again. And there's a little bit of blue here, the remnants of the um, ultramarine blue. And altogether, it makes a wonderful effect here. This is the number 401, which is called Przybysz Gray. That's definitely my favorite out of all the 180 something. I'm not sure how many he has now. They keep growing. The number keeps growing. Yes. Uh, as far as I can tell. Uh, and I think you have them all, right? Because I see them behind you. Yeah, we have all 180 colors. Wow. Yeah, so that's fantastic. That's, uh, so this is, this is the, 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 and they, they are known as uh, Roman, Roman Schmal, that's his first and last name. So that's what he uses as sort of the manufacturer. They're also known under the name Aquarius. Although really in real, in, in real life, I noticed that uh, everyone refers to them as Roman's paints really, because uh, that's, uh, uh, they are very, very popular now in many European countries and they've taken Central Europe by storm pretty much. He is very, yes. very popular there. Yeah, he's been, he's been um, uh, one thing I wanted to mention when you said about him using his name as the name of the company. You know what, that's interesting in a lot of uh, family businesses in art materials. Our family, you know, the name is the name of the company. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, you have that thought, a lot of it. Yes. So, so that's the case for him as well. And, uh, you know, he, 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 he makes those paints as you see them there behind you. There is a lot of them uh, to, to, to play with. So I'll, I'll play with some I have here in this palette. And uh, uh, most of his paints uh, that I have are full pan. Yes. Although some, although, I know he's now experimenting with half pans sort of to make a portable set more geared towards people like Urban Sketchers and things like that. Yes. But uh, primarily his, uh, you know, the, 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 the full pants are his major or main production at this point. I'm not sure if he, he will have tubes yet at this point and not sure that uh, remains to be seen. But the pants, as far as I can tell, uh, I use them uh, for more than six months now and they are excellent and uh, I really like them all. Um, in here, there is a whole mixture of uh, blue ultramarine and burnt sienna because Raman is uh, also a tinkerer. So he wants to be sure that whatever 
he puts out there is the best possible combination and product. So he asked uh, us and some other urban sketchers to uh, test uh, some paints for paint combinations for him. And of course, I told him that, hey, I can look at your uh, combination of uh, ultramarine and burnt sienna. And this is a chart that put, I put together. And, uh, and he asked multiple people from different sort of different uh, you know, backgrounds and different interests on their preferences for the individual pigments. So mm -hmm. when you are getting uh, something that's preset by, by, from him, it's already thought out very deeply. On top of it, you can get a set that is uh, uh, you know, uh, the favorites of uh, people like Jane Blundell, the queen of pigments yes, by, we have by that, far. Yeah, that's so, her set there. Yeah, so that's the set that you were showing at the very beginning, that one, right? That's right. Yeah. So uh, she obviously, you know, she went through the entire range of his paints and selected uh, what she thinks is uh, best for any kind of color combinations and uh, all the possible variations that all those things escape me really. I'm rather simple, when in, especially in comparison with, uh, with what Jane can do here with the color mixing. But I definitely enjoy his paints, you know, and uh, this is, uh, I just cleaned up my palette first time in six months. So I can, so it becomes a bit more presentable, but all those paints here, they were full uh, before, before, uh, you know, the winter. And now they are, some of them are, there's quite a dent in them simply because I use it uh, quite often. So aside from the Fabrish gray, what mm -hmm. are your other what are your other favorites? Well, there's a couple of interesting names there. Like, uh, what was it? Uh, the mummies thing? Yeah, the mummy brown. The mummy brown, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I reread the story about that. So anybody who is uh, wondering what we're talking about, there actually is a color that uh, Roman has. And it's called mummy brown. And when uh, Merrick and I were talking about the product, we both... Uh, Merrick had sent me an article, The History of Mummy Brown, and it's not used today, so don't, don't worry about it. Uh, but many, many, many years ago, Mummy Brown was actually made, uh, the color was made from mummies, or the bones. Um, it's really fascinating, you can find the story on Wikipedia, but uh, Roman has uh, recreated that color uh, using other pigments. Without grindy, grinding uh, or uh, any of the or Egyptian mummies, but that yeah. is the original. That is where the original name comes from, I guess. You yes. know? So it it really sounds like Indiana Jones. It sounds <laughs> like a, a a story that's not true, uh, but that's apparently the case. That's uh, what they were using there, and uh, uh, and of course there's uh, there's many more you know colors that and everybody has their own favorite. I tend to 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 paint in a simple way, so. All these drawings here, or rather paintings, that, I, that I'm showing, I, you might have seen them on any of my previous lives, uh, that they were done with, uh, uh, you know, uh, just a couple of Roman Schmal colors here and there. Uh, this is Havana, Cuba. This is Padova, that's from a life that, uh, that I did yesterday. That was yesterday, yeah. Yeah, that was last night's uh, uh, life here. And that's all painted with uh, this set of colors, really. And not even all of them, just maybe four or five, something like that. And uh, it's, uh, and you know, really the paints are excellent as far as I can tell. And uh, from my point of view, they have one advantage that um, uh, being an urban sketcher, I go out and I paint on location. Me really meaning, you know, sit on the sidewalk and paint. That's primarily really what, what it is. So at the end of that session, you want this box that is obviously wet. You want that to be able to dry up to the point where you can close it and then put it into your bag and not make a mess in the bag and don't, you know, and don't have all the uh, individual uh, pans melt together into one big blob of uh, don't know what kind of color, probably mummy yes. <laughs> or something like that. So. These ones, I find that they are, they have a, a good balance and they end up drying up relatively quickly here. Um, and they are not gooey like some of the other um, brands that have a lot of honey in them or a lot of glycerin. Mm -hmm. They tend to be um, 
gooey or sticky for a long time, sometimes even for days or weeks. And that's perfect for a studio, perhaps. But uh, for myself, as you know, going out and primarily sketching outside, in fair weather, though, I preferred that for that to be, um, you know, to dry up relatively quickly. I just wet them, so that's why there's a little bit of a, of a, a gloss of uh, of water on them. But uh, normally, they they absorb water pretty well, and they work quite fine. I'm quite happy with them. Yes, I was going to say when when you get when you see them. I mean, they're wrapped beautifully. The name is very small on the back what I find interesting about what he does, and I'm gonna see if I can unwrap one of them. It comes, it looks like candy, because you've seen them, uh, Merrick, they're wrapped oh, in yeah. the- Oh uh... yeah, here, here, chocolate candy, yes. Yeah. It's, uh, and you have them all wrapped up in paper, right? Because I, mines are like samples that, uh, that they don't even have the paper anymore. Yeah, so um, when you get it and you unwrap it, it looks like this, piece of candy which is really kind of cool and then of course this is one that we've always played with this is i believe shadow violet and uh you've got this beautiful cake just like as merrick was saying even a little glossy before you use it yeah and uh, and they are covered with a, a tiny bit of like i don't know like a pergamon paper of, or whatever it is some kind of a vellum so it's, it, there's a barrier here in between the sticky part because the, they will be sticky at the beginning, of course, um, and they pretty much stay like that most of the time. Yeah, this is another violet here that I haven't opened yet. You know, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's, they're just, they just great paints, I must say, all together. I mean, by far, my favorite is the 401 Przybysz, but that's just simply because I like to use it for uh, my needs in my sketches here. This is... Uh, this was done here with with the Przybysz, I think. I don't really remember. This is definitely done by Przybysz, the 401, because you can see the individual colors, how it uh, switches and it merges from um, the red and the green and the blue, and they all just go on together. So yeah. that just sketched uh, in. Uh, and this is a sketch uh, Yeah, here, another one also with the same colors. So I really like how some of the colors separate or how some of them mix up. But it's, uh, of course, it's your own personal preference here on what you want to do. Of course. And show. And, and does it work? Do they, all the colors, uh, they all blend uh, well? Yeah, from, from, from what I have tried, you know, I, uh, they all blend absolutely fine uh, you know, by me. Of course, I don't have all the 180 and thank goodness because I wouldn't be able to, to handle that. Uh, you know, I, Truly, I can, you know, I, I did a lot of paints here with just this little set of five, and that's another, a tiny set that uh, that, uh, that I got of Roman Schmal paints, and uh, this just has five, five basic colors, you know, a yellow, a red, a blue, and then two earthy colors, mm -hmm. and that was perfectly fine to paint uh, something that was even up to half sheet size. So that's the advantage also of the larger pan, there's more paint in it and you can do larger work if that, if you're inclined to. I like to work on larger surfaces if I can. Now, I was going to ask you, since you said you've been working with them for six months, have you actually gotten to the bottom of any of the pens? No, absolutely not. I mean, look at that. I mean, Przybysz is the one that I use the most and I'm probably like, you know, I'm, I still have 60 or 70 percent of it for sure. So it's, uh, they are very, very economic. Uh, I, think, I think a lot of watercolors, if not all of them are rather economic, uh, but this is a good uh, high quality artist, uh, artist level of, uh, of uh, uh, paint. So uh, here, let's use some Przybysz gray here on the side. And when you put it on first, it looks like it's, it looks like mud at the beginning, but then it starts separating. And from this kind of, I don't know, muddy color that you might see at the moment, they turn into something like that. You just got to give uh, time to the, the, the pigments to settle their own individual way. And, uh, and you can paint with that. Yeah, it's funny that you say that because before we went live, I was experimenting with one of 
our you know samples and I put it down and it was quite pale but now that it's dried it's really become a lot more intense in color which is beautiful yeah I I, I really you know like them I mean it's it, of course you know it's brands are are tricky right because some people love a particular brand for a particular you know feature or tendency and uh, maybe they like i don't know wet in wet or they like something else or they like pigment separation or they like granulation and uh, and of course you know he's doing um a lot of things that works well for for myself and i think yeah. it would work fine for a lot of urban sketchers as well really that's uh, that's my my take on it but uh, um, I find that uh, um, they are just uh, good paints altogether in general. And here I'm, I just put down a bunch of um, Shibish Gray, the 401 uh, number, and now I'll switch it a little bit around. I put more water on this page than normal uh, because this just is more of a test really. And uh, I'll just wait for the pigments to start separating and hopefully you can see how it starts, uh, you know, being more green, more purple, more blue in some of the areas. And yeah, it just simply yeah. takes time for that process. And, and is the paper that you're using now, I know you like to use large format paper, but is that a text, has a texture to it or the one you're using is it hot press? Yeah, this is a, this is a cold press, um, SMLT, I think, mm -hmm. if I remember. You probably have that too in your shop because you have pretty much everything there. You know, yes, SMLT is the is the the, the paper that I, I I just grabbed that from the shelf, and uh, oops, I'm getting water all over now. But uh, that's uh, part of the fun, right? Part of the fun of uh, doing watercolor is the unpredictability of it. So let's uh, let's be creative and bring that here all together, and uh, dab a little bit more here on that. And maybe I can try to to put to use some of the other colors as well, not only my favorite, because then everybody will just go in and they will just say, "Oh, just give me the the the, the paint that Marek uses. I don't need anything else." No, no, no. <laughs> There's way more to to that, uh, and uh, they are really interesting. <laughs> yeah, they are really interesting uh, paints in here. Um, you've got to find your own, you know, preference. Uh, but uh, I find that they uh, they combine really well for most of uh, the, my, my testing that I did. I really haven't had any problems, really. Primarily, I'm happy with uh, with the sets, you know. The, the sets are great. And if you get a set that, uh, like uh, Jane Blundell's, or you have the set by, is it Mona, the, the other artist that you have a set for? There's a few. There's a few of them that we have, including the Mona set. Right, yeah. So, so they, they all come to it from you know their own corner of the of the woods uh with their own preferences of course but uh, i'm hoping this is showing well enough it, oh, it's yeah. very intense i can see it well okay yeah well that's yeah that's uh, that's exactly what this though this blue is it's it's one of the three or four different different uh, ultramarines with different names to it um which i don't even know what they are uh, but uh, but uh, they are different. They are uh, the individual paints are all you know different here. There's some different differences, uh, and uh, and they are great. They they combine really nicely. So it's uh, just getting I know that. that. He, I know that he has one. I don't know if that's the one that you're using. This is number two five four. It's called Ultramarine Intense. Well, let me see if I have that. Uh, I have a bunch of them, but I don't think I have a 254. So maybe that's one that uh, I haven't seen yet. That's, uh, I mean, when you have 180 different colors, that's yeah. just absolutely, you know, I, I don't know how he came to that number, but it seems to be, uh, I'm, I'm very impressed by the fact that he can actually think of having so many. I love this red too. This is some kind of a, Queen Aquidron Scarlet, it's called. Oh, yeah. And it's, uh, yeah, and uh, they are, the pigments are intense. Oh, and by the way, guess what I'm using here? I'm using a Roman Schmal brush. That's I, a, you mentioned yeah. that. 
I borrowed that from some uh, another urban sketcher that uh, uh, that uh, because I mean, it's also not even mine. So this is the first time I'm using the the Ramon Schmal brush, which is something that he also does on the side, uh, I believe. Uh, uh, and uh, but you know, it's just so. The bottom line is uh, the company is small. It's a it's a you know almost one man operation. You know him and his son at this point, but they are doing watercolor and watercolor only. And they are doing some other pigments for restoration and things like that. Very, very high-end, sophisticated stuff. As mm -hmm. a matter of fact, the, his, his shop, I think I have some pictures of the shop still here somewhere. Do you I? You had sent me a couple pictures of... of yeah, the... you can see here on the back of, uh, of uh, I don't know if that shows, hopefully it does. There's a, a lot of stuff here that is being used to, uh, by museums for you know different type of restoration, the, the different type of mediums. But watercolor is where his heart is, and he's uh, doing really well on that. Yeah, he's got quite he's quite passionate about it. Absolutely, agreed. And on top of that, he's a very nice guy, really nice man. Yeah. So it's just uh, you know it's uh, it's um, quite happy that uh, I can. Uh, tell everyone that uh, I'm happily using Roman Schmal's paints and uh, and uh, not looking, uh, you know, back to anything else. Although I'm not really specifically brand related, right? I mean, why no. why should we be limiting ourselves to just one brand? All I'm saying, sure. it's a good one. If you want to try it, give it a try. I agree. I agree. Mm -hmm. I mean, the one nice thing is when you're when we're looking at different products, and we've talked about this before, he's an independent, he's small, he's not any big corporate that is, you know, working, uh, or making the paint, he is just a, a, a family business, which is uh, something that I, th I always look for, when we're looking to work with a company. Yeah, yeah. And um, uh... It's uh, he's from Krakow, the, the south of Poland. It's uh, the the old city uh, of our Polish kings. So I always make fun of him because he, he you know he's the king of watercolor. And at first he, he was uh, you know not really uh, 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 accepting it, but at this point I can tell you that at least in 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 Poland there is no bigger brand for watercolor than than Roman Schmal. And he's being accepted, uh, you know, in many other places. There were questions here on the chat of where, where to get them in Europe. And, uh, of course, it's easy to find if um, you are somewhere in uh, uh, the eastern countries, you know, Poland, Czech, Germany, they have it there everywhere now, pretty much. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, Mercedes was asking about uh, Spain specifically. Um, and so I'm not sure if... if uh, uh, what is it called, Arte Miranda, if they carry it uh, yet or not, um, you would have to check with them. Um, but uh, maybe some places in UK, uh, you might be able, able to find it. Or simply, you know, uh, I mean, check online. See, put the, put down Ramon Schmal, this Let's name, see and see what pops up for your particular Google search for your area. Yeah, anybody who's looking for it in North America, that's United States or Canada, uh, our company, Gortzman's Art Supplies in Toronto, is stocking the full lines. And uh, we're trying to keep up with everything that uh, Roman is producing to make sure that we have all of the products available. I think oh, good luck. That's and good. we can order it. That's going to be difficult, right, Jackie? <laughs> yeah. That's not an easy thing. I'm sure if you ever get a chance to visit again, you're going to come back and tell me all about the new things that he has. Yeah, yeah. He he probably manufactured another five colors while we were chatting. <laughs> who who probably. knows? Probably. <laughs> so I see you're, you're again. You're you're doing exactly what we had talked about earlier. You're doing a, a drawing there while we're chatting. Is it anything in particular? No, no. This is just a. a, a, a it's a it's a color version of uh, my doodles. I like. I like doing doodling. Uh, it's nothing in specific. It usually ends up being something architectonish. That, that's, but that's just because of my background, you know, can't escape from it. Sure. Uh, but, uh, but it really is just a, a painting of, of nothing and it's not intended to be anything. Sometimes it, it, someone says, oh, it looks like, I don't know. Um, and, you know, it looks like something. So then I can try to pull it that direction. 
uh, but uh, this is just uh, doodling around here, enjoying the paints because they are really nice and really excellent. And you can see how, they, how brilliant they are, both wet and also when they are, when they dry up a little bit. And this is uh, decent uh, cotton paper, maybe not as good as the Arches paper, but uh, fairly, fairly good. And, uh, and it works really well. Looks beautiful. The color that you put down, you just put down, that's a wash of a color? Right, yeah, it's just, uh, I mean, effectively, you, you, can, you can put, you know, uh, paint wet in wet, uh, you know, so, so put out a pool of water. I'll, I'll use some dirty water here and then add paint to it, right? I'm using dirty water just so it will be more visible. That's pretty much what it is, right? So that's a, a combination here of adding things that would be wet in wet. And you can do that in, on, a, on a white, transparent, clear water, so then there is no dirt in it. Mm -hmm. um, or, or often I'm, I'm impatient I'm, and lazy, both of those things. So I often will rather put pigment down first and then maybe wash my brush and uh, put a little bit of, uh, of water here next to it and let the two surfaces touch around so it just bleeds across. And you can see all those wonderful separations and granulations and whatever else that's happening here. It's happening already on uh, that little bit of, uh, of uh, and, this, and this paint here is swashing. Oh, there you go, I just connected them together. So yeah, it's great, great paints, great uh, set, great manufacturer. You can, you can get, uh, I think you have different sets. They are, all the, are they all 24? Uh, paints for the set that you have? The Jane Blundell set is uh, 24 colors. Mm -hmm. And then we also have the set, uh, unfortunately, I am never good at pronouncing the names. So this is the Kowalski set. And this one has 12 colors. There is a I set see. of five uh, as well. And this is the uh, Adam Papke set, also has 12 colors. And this mm -hmm. one, there is one of them, I believe, that has your favorite violet in it. Uh, oh, yeah. I have to check because I know there was one of them at least. Uh, this is, I believe it's this one. I have to check here. No. I don't see it on this one either. But I know we do have one of the sets that has it. Um, well, these are all available. These are all on our website. I know that it looks backwards right now. So I'm, I apologize for that. Uh, on Instagram, it reverses it all. So you could get to see the different uh, pictures when you're actually looking at them online. They're, these are cardboard uh, sets. Uh, the uh, Jane Blundell and then the um, one that the Omari set are in metal tins. And then of course, we're waiting for all the other new sets that are coming in metal tins. I mean, we do have metal tins if you want to get them to fit the full pan. Uh, we've made sure that we have those available. and They're not really that expensive. So it's, it's always convenient if you need it. Yeah, and I would say that looking at the, your background now, Jackie, you have uh, all 180 of those colors behind you, right? That's what they are. We do. And... With, with all the open spots for all the new colors he's going to make. Uh, okay. <laughs> so, so anybody who is thinking of uh, or considering, you know, maybe uh, going and trying out uh, Roman's products, you, know, you can just uh, uh, go in, pick something from the website, or if you are in Toronto, even better, walk into the store and uh, and see what uh, what strikes your fancy. Uh, yeah, we can we can pull out that color chart so you can be uh, amazed and dazed by 180 different colors right in front of you. Yeah, I, I'm, I get confused by that, but I like the fact that he his wrappers uh, they, he still has uh, uh, the paint on the on the wrappers on the outside of it, right? So it's it's not only the silver part, but it has a, a white a white cover with the with a sample of the paint itself. Correct? Yes, yes, right. absolutely, and it gives the uh, breakdown of what the pigment is inside. Uh, the name of the color is on the back. He's really done his homework on the packaging, which is really quite nice. Yeah, and if I uh, if I recall correctly, the the wrappers are actually 
are actually painted. They're, those yes. they, they are they are actual paints. They are not prints of the color that's inside. They are actual samples of uh, yes. of paints, paint chips, effectively. That's uh, as you would get them in in uh, you know in Home Depot when you go and you get that little chip of paper. Uh, it's actually a piece of paint, the real paint, and that's what he does too. And he uses that to wrap up his full pants. Um, I don't know what he does with the half pants. I think half pants are only in in sets, and he's only started that recently, right? Yes, I, I still think yeah, his so. his uh, love is for the full pen. It's probably easier to uh, fill it than it is for the half pens. And besides, it makes it different right. by having a full pen rather than a half pen, right? They, yeah, yeah. I mean, they're you get a lot of paint, which is really great. Yeah, yeah, definitely, because the, 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 the half pants are obviously much smaller if you compare the two of them here, you know, it, it's just half really, you know, but realistically, it, it seems like it's even less. And uh, so this is just another one of his sets that he's, this one's the one that he's floating for or thinking of for Urban Sketchers. So that's, uh, that's something that, uh, it's uh, probably coming up to your store as well as soon as it gets released uh, in uh, in commercial quantities. I hope That's so. That's really what it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just oh, checking if we, if we have any any uh, questions here on the comments. If you guys have any questions to Jackie or myself, please put it down in the comments, and I'll be happy to read it out loud, and we can try to address it. That would be great. Merrick's much better. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about the setup, so you can tell that Merrick is, as much as I have done lives before, and uh, I do them every week, uh, it's, I always learn something from Merrick because he's just got that, he's always that one step ahead. <laughs> no, that's, that's all fine. Yeah, no, but, and, and you did say already that uh, you ship to anywhere in North America, so that's U.S. Right. and Canada, and, uh, and that's probably, what, the, what do they call it? it Conus contagious U.S. right? Is it or anywhere in the U.S. Uh, any, anywhere in the United States. No, oh, fantastic. That's great. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. and uh, so it's uh, it's an easy easy choice to just go to the website at guardsmans.com and uh, pick up whatever you might need from from Jackie from her store and uh, put in an order. Someone did send a message. Uh, I believe about the, um, I can't see it again. So something yeah, about see lifting it. once it's dry. Yeah, I see it. So are they easy to lift after drying? Well, so they, they, they are because they have uh, enough of glycerin and honey in them. Although it depends because the lifting itself also depends on the particular, um, whether are you using a staining color or are you using a heavy pigmented granulating color and things like that. And they also depends on the paper you're using. So uh, here, um, let me see which, which part is dry. Let me see if I can try to lift something. If I do, I have a, I can use the other uh, sheet, but it's still, it's still not dry. I would, I would try to lift something here for you. No, but it's still not dry yet. It really needs to be bone dry in order to lift something. And uh, and uh, so um, I've tried that before out of curiosity, the lifting technique. Um, I don't use it much um, because I simply accept what it is, right? It's a best thing to do. Don't make any mistakes. You don't, you don't have to lift anything and fix anything. <laughs> but, but if you do want to lift something, it's possible because I tried it before, okay? So uh, for the pigments that I used, uh, some pigments, uh, regardless of the brand, will be staining to the point where you, can, you cannot really lift them from the page anymore. I mean, it's just uh, uh, not, not achievable. And, but with, with 180 different colors, uh, you, have, you have a choice of uh, what you are buying. And I don't know how many blues he has, probably 20 by now. So some of them will lift, some of them will not. Quite a few. Blue, yeah. Blues, purples, things like that might not lift uh, too well. Uh, uh, and dark colors in general, you know. Yeah. Uh, someone else. Uh, sorry, I was going to say someone asked asking, about ink. Yeah, someone's asking about ink. Uh, Barry from uh, Sao Paulo. Hi, Barry. is asking if you ship to Brazil. I don't know if you ship to Brazil yet, uh, Jackie. 
We, we don't. We could certainly find out about uh, shipping there as long as we knew uh, a city or a, 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 a code, zip code or home code, city code. Uh, we so, can find out about mailing it to you. So what's the best way? Just send an, an, e an email here to, to us, inquire about that with that information, the, the city code. I know it's Sao Paulo, but it's somewhere in Brazil. You sure. Know, so. if, they, if they sent it to our, uh, through our website, uh, gwartzmans.com, um, and we'll be posting our name and address or our, our uh, website address, um, they can also send it through Instagram and that we can, we can connect through that way too. Okay. The other question I see here is about the, the waterproof ink that works with this paint. So it's uh, it's really not uh, it's it's outside of the scope of today. But uh, I'll tell you that I have a listing of the inks that I use for my urban sketching, and the three of them are waterproof. And you can find all of that information on Instagram. Just go to my bio, and you'll find a link there to the inks that I use for sketching. There is waterproof inks in that. Hopefully that uh, will answer your questions. If not, uh, uh, send me a message and I'll try to help you out further. All right. I, I don't know if you carry any waterproof inks uh, in, in your store, Jackie. Uh, we do have some. I would certainly like to see what you recommend for uh, watercolor. I know that there are a lot of personal preferences. Uh, yeah. So it would always be good to find out um, what you recommend or what the personal preference is. Right, because in, in many cases here is the is the the fact is that like uh, um, I, I like to use water uh, sorry waterproof inks that go into fountain pens, and that's another different story. If you're using dip nips and uh, those uh, those pens that you just go and dip them into ink, then you can use many more inks, calligraphy inks, and so on and so forth. And you have yes. many more additional options. But uh, uh, so that's, but that's a totally different story um, away. Uh, th these paints, Raman Schmal's paints will work with um, any ink, of course. I mean, there's no, they, they are just good quality artist level watercolor paints. So if uh, whatever you might be having already, uh, should work uh, uh, with this, these paints. In my opinion, it, it does work well with everything that I use. That's great. Okay. Looking if there is anything else here to, to any other questions. I don't see, I don't see anything else. Someone so, is just, asked, so, sorry, Merrick. Someone has just asked about waterproof fine liners. Uh, I guess that would be like the Sakura or the um, Copic fine liners, they would work as well if they're waterproof? Absolutely, yes, absolutely. Any of those, uh, the Pentels, the, the Stedlers, uh, you know, you name it. And I, I don't have any on my desk, really, but uh, that they work fine. Here, I have, a, I have my Fuda pen on, on my desk because I was drawing with it yesterday. So no, no surprise, it's still on my desk because I'm too lazy to put it away, right? So here, I'll just uh, put some ink down and I'll just actually go across here through. Some of this paint has dried up to the point where uh, it's, uh, it can be now be uh, sketched on, on top of. Uh, and this is waterproof ink, so it will not bleed. It's, uh, it, that's just the, the ink I have in this pen. One of the ones uh, that's listed. Uh, but you can easily mix um, the Roman Schmal paints with uh, with with uh, ink, and I'll I'll use a watery version here of something just so you can see it. Yeah, and it's there's there's no problem here on any of that. It's all working quite well. I hope it's um, I was I think I was off the the screen there, so you can That's see how it how it works out. Okay. Um, how, the question is how much are uh, uh, Ramon Schmal's watercolors? I, I, I'm not sure. Do we have different series in there? There are about, I believe, eight different series. Uh, so they, uh, of course, in the higher series, there are fewer colors, which we have. Um, mm -hmm. But most of them are series one and two, which make them really quite affordable and, and 
you know, as we were talking about, because they are a full pan, these are not half pans in an artist quality. Uh, they're not as expensive as you might think. Um, so uh, to me, they're actually a, a great investment in color, especially if you're buying, as Merrick has some, you know, individual favorites. You don't always have to buy the full range. You can choose that one special color that you certainly want to add to your palette. Yeah, or one or two or five special colors that you like, or, or you end up buying all 12 of them sometimes. But uh, really, I, I, I've been doing a lot of paintings with just this set here, and it doesn't, it's, it's mostly warm colors and mostly earthy things, but that all depends what you like to, to paint. For these doodles that I'm doing fine here, this works great. Um, I did a lot of paintings with just, I did actually a whole bunch of, a whole set of paintings with those five here. Oh, you were asking if I got to the bottom of uh, any. So the, the ultramarine blue seems to be the one I use the heaviest because I can see a tiny bit of the bottom, you know, hitting the bottom there. But that was, uh, the, that was, uh, I probably did 30 large paintings, half sheets, uh, wow. using just these five. And uh, it's still mostly full, more full than more than empty. It's like that glass of wine, right? It's either, <laughs> depending if you're an optimist or a pessimist, it's either half full or half empty. So for That's me, true. it's uh, it's full. It's full. It's half full. It's always half full. <laughs> That's the case. Well, okay. I think okay. I, I want to... Thank you, Merrick. I know that uh, I really do appreciate your time tonight. Uh, I, anybody who's, as I say, had the opportunity to watch Merrick, I mean, even tonight, just watching you do this doodle is absolutely amazing <laughs> for me to watch and see the work that you do. Uh, you can check out Merrick's work at MerrickBad64. Correct, Merrick? Yes. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to thank you. If anybody has any questions about the product, you can reach out to us. We're Gwartzman's Art Supplies here in Toronto. Uh, you can check us out on, it'll be on Instagram. You can also, if you have any, want to see what Merrick was doing this evening, you, we will have it posted on our Instagram live. Um, you can check out the product on our website, uh, gortsmans.com. You can come and see them in our store. We have all 180 colors. And for those of you that can't visit, uh, again, you can see them on our website, uh, gortsmans.com. I want to thank again Merrick for his time. He's oh, great. my pleasure, Jackie. I just I just want to show something here because there's while we were chatting, this this paint separated really really nicely here. I hope that it shows. Uh, it look does. at this stuff here. Well, look what's happening here. This is uh, very nice, you know, pigmentation here and granulation. And uh, there's a, a couple of different names here that some of them escape me, but uh, it's starting to settle into the wells of the paper. This is cold pressed, not very heavy cold pressed, uh, but it has a little bit of a mm -hmm. texture. And, and this paint is starting to do its magic. So. I'm really liking what I see here. And Diana was asking, uh, what was the company? Diana just, just got on now. So this is Ramon Schmal is the, is the manufacturer or you look for the name Aquarius. Although I think Ramon Schmal is uh, more unique. Oh, backwards again, but this does say Aquarius. Oh, that's <laughs> right. Yes, it's yeah. backwards. Yeah, I keep forgetting, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Well, okay. thank you so much, Merrick. Well, thank you, Jackie, and have a wonderful evening. All right, thanks thank again. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you all, and see always. you again. See you all right. life. Good night, bye -bye. everyone. Thank you Good for night. joining us. And as I always say, please keep on creating. If you have any questions, please, please reach out to us. Uh, we love connecting with artists all over the world, and uh, it's been a pleasure representing uh, Roman Small, who's a family-owned business, just like we are family-owned. And uh, I look forward to seeing some of the um, work that you do. And don't forget, for anybody who's still joining us, we do have a contest to win one of the Jane Blundell sets. This is a set of 24 colors in a metal tin. Uh, you can find the information on our website. You can find it on Instagram, Facebook. We look forward to seeing the artwork that you submit. 
And uh, I hope you'll start checking us out and seeing what we offer. And again, just enjoy what you do and uh, keep on creating. Have a great evening, everyone. Bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.